Hello guys! For many years on Laravel Daily we've been collecting open source Laravel projects in our database. So if you go to resources and click projects, there is a list of currently 119 open source projects built on Laravel, not packages, not Laravel internal tools, but projects that use Laravel. And I've been always wondering what's inside. Are there any similarities, patterns, how typically those projects are structured? What technologies do they use? What packages do they use? And so on. And I decided to make such investigation. So this will be a bit untypical video of me reading the slides for you because I made that presentation as a presentation in my local Laravel meetups in my Vilnius, Lithuania just a few days ago. And I decided to shoot separately a video here on YouTube. And with those open source project, I asked three questions. What is the typical structure of the app folder, which means actions or repositories or services? What do they typically use? The second question, what front end do they use for dynamic elements like Livewire or Inertia and then Inertia with what view or React? And then do they have automated tests. And then the question number four was the most popular packages used in those projects. So first I checked all the projects for, is it updated? Is it fresh? And from 119 projects, unfortunately, majority, more than half were filtered out. As I said, we've been collecting that project list for many years, for like seven or eight years. So for this review, for this research, I didn't take any projects of Laravel 8 and older or that have no commits in two years or more. Some of them were just abandoned or deleted. So 51 left. And this is my takeaway number one from open source projects. Many just don't live long because it's relatively easy to create a project while you're in the zone on the hype of creating something, but then maintenance upgrades issues, support and stuff like that. Not everyone has free time for that because majority of those projects are just like hobby project in your free time or something like that. And then takeaway number two related to Laravel version upgrades. Quite a few of those projects were upgraded in terms of features, new features, bug fixes and stuff like that. But as soon as there was a question of upgrading Laravel version, many of those projects didn't survive. So I saw quite a few projects, for example, on Laravel 9 with new features added or some bug fixes, but still on Laravel 9. Because especially for bigger projects, it takes time to update the versions. So basically, if you want your project to survive long term, you have to upgrade versions pretty much with every version or at least every two versions. But also from the other side, you shouldn't do that immediately as Laravel 11 or 12 is released. In my personal experience, the kind of sweet spot is a few months after the version is released. By that time, usually the docs are updated, the bugs are fixed and the packages are updated. Majority of packages are updated to support new Laravel versions. Or at least by then you see what packages are not intended to upgrade. And then you can fork or do whatever. So now after that filter of that project, let's dive inside. And number one question I get in general is how to structure Laravel projects? Should I use services, repositories or anything different? And the answer is how to structure Laravel projects however you want in most cases, or however your team wants. And I could end the presentation right here, but of course I'm trolling here. So troll is the animated version because I watched Trolls 3 recently with my kids. So it's not just a meme from internet. Troll is a more friendly troll, but let's continue with the numbers. So actions, events, repositories, and services. I deliberately made it in alphabetical order, not in the order of popularity, could you guess which are the numbers from 51 projects and which is the most popular? The answer is services. So 28 projects out of 51 use services. Roughly similar number, 27 projects are using events. And with events, interestingly, many project authors create events, so app events folder or maybe somewhere else, but they don't necessarily create listeners. And this is actually kind of the point of forward thinking with events. So your application fires an event for yourself or someone else in the future 
to consume and to listen to. It's kind of like a hook for the future for anyone who wants to use that event data. And then actions and repositories, 10 projects each, but the difference is that repositories were much more popular in older projects. So there's a downward trend with using repositories and actions became pretty popular in Laravel relatively recently. So there's upward trend with using actions. Also, there were a few projects out of those 51 so big that they had to split to something more fundamental. So five projects used either modules or internal packages in the packages folder. There's a module or a package with full Laravel application inside just used internally. And three project had domains folder or DDD like structure. And I recently shared one of them on Twitter and I will link that tweet in the description below so you can take a look. Next question, front end Livewire or JS and then JS React or Vue and then React or Vue with or without inertia. Basically, the ultimate question is Livewire or something with JS. This is a question often asked by junior developers what to learn and what to study. The result Results are these. 19 projects use Livewire and 20 projects combined, 16 and 4 use React or Vue, and React is used in only four projects. Out of those 20 JS projects, only eight use Inertia. And there are also trends here, upward and downward. The upward trend is, of course, Livewire because it's relatively fresh in Laravel community. So it became much more popular in recent years and more projects, new projects are created with Livewire. But older projects are created with JS when there was no Livewire or just if developer is more familiar with JavaScript or more preferred Preferring JavaScript, that's totally fine. Then they use JS. And then Inertia is also relatively fresh. So there were projects, I guess, started before Inertia even exists. So that's why the whole architecture is JavaScript, React, or Vue, and then Laravel as API source. Then the third question, can you guess how many of those projects have tests. And the criteria was at least one test, which is not from any starter kit like Laravel Breeze or JetStream or whatever, a custom test, whether PHP unit or PEST. And this number surprised me. On Twitter and elsewhere, I see the kind of trend and overall thinking that we don't have time to write tests. But here I saw 40 projects out of 51 have at least one test. Not bad. And I interpreted that number in a way that probably if you publish something in public open source for other developers to consume, it's kind of a shame for you to release something for the public without writing any tests. The final question, most popular packages. So this is what I've done. I've copy pasted the require and require dev sections in composer JSON of those projects into one single JSON and then ask ChatGPT to process that. And this was my prompt. So take the JSON, analyze that, and return a collection to me. Can you guess if ChatGPT handled the work successfully? Yep, it did. So it showed me the code, which I didn't even actually read too much. I just kind of skimmed through it, copy pasted it into my PHP storm and just changed the input and the output. So file JSON in the beginning and then return collection into Blade. So I created a Blade table. And result was this. So yeah, ChatGPT is a great assistant for such small scripts where I didn't care too much about performance or algorithm. This was the result and many of those packages, it's not even packages, it's just the keys of JSON. So obviously many of those are by definition system packages like PHP, Laravel Framework, Mockery that come with Laravel version when you install it. And some of those packages changed over the years. Some appeared in Laravel installation, some disappeared, some were replaced. So here's an example of Composer JSON if you compare Laravel 11, 10 and older version 8. So for example, Guzzle existed in Laravel 10 and not in Laravel 11 anymore. Also Ignition used to be Facade Ignition, then Spotty Laravel Ignition, and now it isn't even in the Composer at all. Also now Sanctum is optional only if you install API in Laravel 11. But still, I had to kind of filter out, remove manually those system packages. And then this was the top 10 after that filter. And the first package, probably the most popular by far is Doctrine, which may be considered also as a system package because it was required until Laravel 10 to perform some data change operations and migrations. So maybe we could filter that out 
that as well. But the most popular by far is, of course, Laravel Debug Bar. And then we have Redis, Laravel UI, which meant that some projects were started in earlier Laravel versions where Laravel UI was popular, then Intervention Image, S3 Storage, Socialite, and others. And then top 20, here we have another starter kit of Laravel Breeze at number 11, but the numbers here get really low. So eight projects out of 51 use Spotty Laravel Ray, for example. And if you go back one slide, even the number like 18 for Redis, it's 18 out of 51, so it's one third. Which means if you're asked what are the most typical popular packages in Laravel, there's no such thing. Every project has different requirements, different goals, and different packages are result of that. So there's no such thing as must-have package for every Laravel project. It's all pretty different. And just out of curiosity, there were in total 570 different rows in that key. So yeah, this is the end of the presentation. What do you think about those numbers? Have I misinterpreted something and you have another opinion on some numbers? Let's discuss in the comments below. And of course, it's representing only 51 projects, which is not that many. So maybe take those numbers kind of with a grain of salt and do not make very serious conclusions for the future. And again, if you want to see those projects with the links on laravel.com, it's free resources projects, and then you may sort them by GitHub stars or by newest added, for example. So these are the ones added in October or September of 2024, including, for example, Pinkery should be somewhere here. Oh yeah, it's on top. Pinkery, pretty fresh, but already with 1000 stars. So it's totally beneficial to dive into its code. You can click here and land on their GitHub and see what's inside. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.